We are right next to a sequence of deposits that represent successive eruptions of the volcano. Compared to other places that you go, for example, more recent eruptions, the 1979 eruption, the 1902 eruption, where you can't find very much evidence of these eruptions because the deposits were relatively thin. The sequence that we have ranged from five to seven meters, which represent eruptions that either happened in the prehistoric past or the more distant past than 1900s. At the base, you have mainly fluvial deposits, material that has been reworked by the river, and then above it, you have a sequence of thick pyroclastic density currents. The, the basal parts are mainly blocky and, and large grain size, and as you go higher up, you have them interbedded by surge deposits, which are finer grain material and pyroclastic flow deposits. And when you have thick sequences like these, it means that you've had probably large magnitude ev events in the past from Sufre, and it gives you an impression of what the volcano is capable of doing, quite apart from having the kinds of size eruptions as we had in 19, 1979 and in 1902. It is capable of larger scale eruptions, which produces these thick deposits. What you find in paraclastic um, density currents and paraclastic flow deposits as we have here is a rock that's quite light, it has a lot of holes in it. So when it came out of the volcano, it was, it was fluid, probably still not solid magma yet, that had lots of, of gas in it that hadn't come out yet. And essentially when it, when it got pelted out from an explosive eruption or, or get ejected as part of a paraclastic flow, the, the, the gases that you had in it creates holes in it and it, it then becomes very light. Um, it's very it's very rough to, to touch and it's, it's one of the, the two main sort of types of class that you have in these kinds of deposits. The other kind of thing that you have is something that is much denser and heavier. At the summit of the volcano it was already um, solidified and after it had become solid probably got caught up in a paraclastic flow. These, these kinds of class are more likely to cause you harm than, than sort of the, the lighter lighter material, the, the bombs that, that has a lot of holes in it. One of the ways in which we date pyroclastic deposits is by looking for charcoal. They're essentially um, pieces of bits of vegetation that were burnt by pyroclastic flows as they came down the valley. What they do is they seal in a particular isotope of carbon that we could then date. And by dating this, we could know when it was killed and by extension when the pyroclastic flow was laid down. And that's how we try to build up a record of how many eruptions we've had. And that's very important in terms of trying to determine when the next eruption is likely to happen or how often these eruptions happen.